Hello and welcome back. So throughout the whole first half of this year, we've mainly focused on uh, mechanics. So we've talked about uh, particles and objects and uh, how they respond to forces that are being exerted to them. And over the next few months, we're going to be changing gears and we're going to be mostly focusing on electricity and magnetism. So we're going to talk about things like uh, charged particles and the forces that are exerted on charged particles. We'll talk about magnetic fields and the forces that are created by magnetic fields. We'll also talk about electricity and how it can be generated. And then we'll talk about some basic circuit elements like resistors and capacitors. Uh, for this first video, I really just want to focus on charged particles and the forces that are exerted between charged particles. So charge is one of the three intrinsic properties that fundamental particles can have. So what exactly do I mean by this? Well, a fundamental particle is a particle which has no internal structure, so it's not made up of anything else. So for example, an atom is not a fundamental particle because an atom is made up of smaller parts. It has protons and neutrons and electrons. So an example of a fundamental particle would be something like an electron because it doesn't have anything inside of it. And it turns out that an electron is really defined by just three properties. And these properties are mass, charge, and something called spin. Uh, and you already kind of know what mass is. We'll talk about charge in this video. Spin is a little bit interesting. It turns out that an electron kind of acts like it has a little bit of a magnet inside of it, you know, little north and south poles. And this is what spin describes. So it turns out that an electron has a mass of 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, and it has a charge of minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, and then it has a spin of 1 half. And now, at this point, I should also just mention, just briefly, a little tangent. It turns out that protons and neutrons are actually not fundamental particles. So it turns out that protons and neutrons are actually made up of smaller parts. So a proton, it turns out, is actually made up of three smaller particles. So inside of a proton, there are three things that are called quarks. So a proton is made up of two up quarks and one down quark. And a neutron is made up of three quarks as well. It has one up quark and two down quarks. So it turns out that protons and neutrons are actually not fundamental particles. They're actually made up of smaller parts. However, um, they're so closely bound that they basically act like fundamental particles. Now, as you know from your chemistry class, all atoms are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Neutrons are a particle which have no charge. And objects which have no charge are usually referred to as being electrically neutral. Protons and neutrons, on the other hand, have charge. And it turns out that protons and neutrons have an equal and opposite charge. So a proton has a positive charge and an electron has a negative charge. And the magnitude of these charges is referred to as the fundamental unit of charge, which is usually denoted with a lowercase letter e. And this is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So a proton has a charge of plus E and the electron has a charge of minus E. Now the reason that this is referred to as the fundamental unit of charge is that it turns out that any larger charge is always equal to an integer times the fundamental unit of charge. And the reason that this happens is that whenever an object gains charge, an object gains charge by either gaining or losing electrons. So for example, if you're wearing socks and you shuffle your feet across the floor, what happens is that uh, electrons are transferred from the carpet to your socks. So the charge that you gain from doing this will be minus the number of electrons that move from the carpet to your socks times the charge of the electron. So because the transfer of charge from one object to another corresponds to the transfer of an actual physical particle, an electron, moving from one object to another, it turns out that charge is never created or destroyed. So when an object gains charge, it gains this charge by taking charge from another particle. So the reason we're interested in studying charged particles is that it turns out that charged particles actually exert a force on one another.
So this is why, for example, uh, when you pull clothes out of a dryer, the clothes are very clingy. You know, they want to kind of stick to each other. And the reason that this happens is that charge has been transferred from one piece of clothing to another. And the magnitude of the force that is exerted between two point particles is given by something called Coulomb's Law, which is summarized by this equation down here. So Coulomb's Law says that the force that is exerted between two point particles is equal to some constant times the magnitude of one of the charges times the magnitude of the other charge divided by the square of the distance between the two particles. And the formula for this force is very similar to the formula that we use to describe the gravitational force between two distant objects. So you may remember that the universal gravitational force is given by this formula right here. It's equal to this constant times the mass of one of the objects times the mass of the other object divided by the square of the distance between the two objects. And Coulomb's law says that the force between charged particles is equal to a constant times the magnitude of one charge times the magnitude of the other charge divided by the square of the distance between the two particles. So the only thing that's really changed is that instead of the force being proportional to the masses, now the force is being proportional to the charges. And because charges can be either positive or negative, it turns out that the Coulomb force will actually be quite a bit more complicated than the gravitational force. So just like the gravitational force, the Coulomb force always acts along a straight line that connects the two particles. So what this means is that if I have, say, two particles right here, the force that is exerted by these two particles will always act along this line. So you'll never have a force that goes like something like this. The forces will always point either in this direction or in this direction. They'll always be parallel to that line that connects the two particles. So it's just like the gravitational force in this sense. However, because the charges can be positive or negative, the force could be either repulsive or attractive. So it turns out that when the charges have the same sign, so if they're both positive charges or they're both negative charges, then the force will be repulsive. And if the charges have opposite signs, then the force will be attractive. And so this is where the saying comes that opposites attract, because opposite charges will attract each other. So we found that the force that is exerted between charged particles is given by this formula right here. The Coulomb force is equal to a constant times the magnitude of one of the charges times the magnitude of the other charge divided by the square of the distance. And so anytime I introduce a new variable like this, I always want to look at the units. So remember that if we apply dimensional analysis, we know that the units have to be equal on both sides of the equal sign. So if I solve for the units of k, I see that the units of k have to be equal to the units of force times the units of distance squared divided by the units of charge squared. And that's going to be newtons times meters squared. And remember, the units of charge are coulombs. So we see that the units of k are newtons meters squared per coulomb squared. And in fact, k has a value of 8.99 times 10 to the 9 newton meters squared per coulomb squared. And this is a very nice value because most of the time when I do calculations, I'll just say that this is 9 times 10 to the 9. That's very easy to type into calculators then. And it's easy to remember as well. So because uh, the Coulomb force can be either attractive or repulsive, I want to work through a few, these are just very simple conceptual examples where I want to look at finding the direction of the force that is exerted on this particle right here in the center. And one of the things I want to point out real quick, because I'm going to be using this convention throughout this lecture and in all of the other lectures as well, that uh, anytime you see a red particle like this, this will correspond to a positively charged particle and the yellow particles will correspond to negatively charged particles. So here I'm saying this is a plus four microcoulomb and a minus four microcoulomb charge. The magnitude of the charge isn't very important because all I want you to do now is figure out the direction of the force that is being exerted on this particle here in the center. Now remember, the trick is opposite particles attract and like particles repel one another. So because this is a positively charged particle, and this is a negatively charged particle, 
these two particles will be attracted towards each other. So this will exert a force like that on this particle. Similarly, these two particles have the same charge, so they will repel. So this particle on the left will exert a force like this on the center particle. So because both of these particles are pushing this center particle towards the right, the net force acting on this charge in the center is going to point to the right. Now in the second example, we have all of the particles are positively charged. So all of the particles are pushing this particle away from them. So this m particle over here is going to push this one away, and this particle over here is going to push the particle away as well. So they're going to be pointing in opposite directions. So the direction of the net force that's acting on this particle depends on which one of these two forces is greater. Now remember the Coulomb force is equal to K Q1 Q2 divided by the distance squared. So because the charge in the center is closer to this charge on the left, the repulsive force that the charge on the left exerts on this particle is greater than the repulsive force that this charge pushes on the particle. So as a result, this particle is going to be pushed to the right. So the net force acting on this particle points to the right because the repulsive force of the particle on the left exerts on this particle is greater than the repulsive force that the particle on the right exerts on it. So let's go ahead and look at another example. Here we have three positively charged particles all exerting a force on this particle. Well, because they're both positively charged, these two particles repel each other. So this charge down here at the bottom is going to exert a force pointing upwards on this charge. This particle over here on the left will exert a force pointing to the right on this charge. And this particle down here at the bottom corner will exert a force upwards at an angle on this charge right here. So if I add all these three charges together, I see that the net force that's being acted on this charge Q points upwards to the right. So let's go ahead and look at a few more examples. Here we have all positively charged particles. Again, remember, like particles repel one another. So this particle down here is going to exert a force that looks like this. Remember, again, the forces act on a straight line connecting the particles. This force, I'm sorry, this particle down here will exert a force that looks like this on the center particle. And then if I add these two forces together, they're going to point upwards like this. So this is the sum of the forces exerted on the center particle right here. So what if the charge in the bottom left corner is negative? Well now, this is going to be an attractive force in this direction. The particle down here in the bottom right is still a positive charge, so it's going to repel this charge. And if we add these two forces together, we'll see that the net force that's being acted on this particle points to the left. So now if I just reverse this so the positive charge is on the left and the negative charge is on the right, well again, like charges attract each other, so this positive charge here is attracted to the negative charge at the bottom right. It's repelled from the positive charge at the bottom left corner. And then if I add these two forces together, I see that the sum of these two forces points to the right. And lastly, if both of these charged particles were negative, well again, remember, opposite particles attract each other. So we're going to have a force that points like this, I'm going to have a force that points like this, and if I add these two together, I get a total force that points downwards. So at this point, I think I'd like to end this video, and in the next video, I'm going to talk about something called an electric field, which basically gives us another way to describe the force that's being exerted on charged particles.